first historical commission public meeting on Monday, no, on Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. Based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. I'm Jane Walden as chair of the Amherst Historical Commission. I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.37 p.m. This meeting is being recorded, uh, which will uh, produce minutes for, um, for the meeting. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote, vote uh, a roll call of commissioners in attendance. And as you hear your name called, just answer and we will complete our list. Patricia Ah. Present. Uh, Rodham, Robin Fordham, I know is not able to attend. Janet Marquardt. Here. Jane Scheffler. Here. Hetty Startup. Here. And Jane Wald, I'm here too. Um, let's see, I think we've discovered that there's not a raised hand function for members of the commission in webinar format. So just raise your real hand and uh, <laughs> we'll call on you to, to comment. Um, an opportunity for public comment is provided at the end of the uh, agenda during the general public comment period. Please be aware for those um, attending the meeting, uh, mem uh, members of the general public attending the meeting that commissioners need not respond to comments during the general public comment period. If guests wish to make a comment during that time, uh, please, if possible, let's see, can you see raise hands, Ben? Yes. yes. Okay, please raise your hand using the raise hand function uh, and you will be called on. Identify yourself by stating your full name and address and then put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents are welcome to express their views up for up to three minutes and at the discretion of the commission chair. So with that, uh, we can turn to the agenda, which begins with announcements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can put the agenda up here. Oh, great, thank you. Whoops. Okay, are you all seeing that? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. So yeah, are there any announcements from any of the commission members? Any updates on anything? I have none. Okay. Not for me. Um, I will say, um, I, I don't know if this is announcements or unanticipated items, but um, Nate has been in touch with the um, Mark Andrews from Amherst College regarding the 205 South Pleasant, South Pleasant Street um, property that we uh, enacted a delay on in, in May. Um, there's been some movement there regarding um, so having found someone to possibly move the house. Um, and they're interested in coming back before the commission. Um, and so we're working out with the building commissioner right now about kind of what that process looks like in terms of um, what needs to happen for them to lift the delay. So that, that just happened this week and we're talking with Amherst College and with Rob about the next steps, but um, that might impact kind of how we schedule our next meeting if there's a, if it involves a public hearing, we would just need time to, you know, add, get the details about their project, possibly advertise um, a, a public hearing, um, and then prepare for that. So I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. Yeah. Why would a why would a public hearing be necessary if they are taking the steps that we have asked them to take? Would they not just come back to the commission? To I mean, do yeah. They they need to file another demolition permit or what? I think that's still the conversation we need to have with Rob about what that process looks like. Um, Cause it's, it's either, yeah, it's either lifting the delay or it's um, because it's a 
different kind of I, I i i don't really know exactly how to interpret the bylaw sometimes but it's it, it's almost like because they're moving the property property or the building um it might trigger kind of a new demolition application so, but, because that okay. was one of the things that we allowed allowed for right in delay was that that would be a solution to demolition I, th I think right. it's improper to require another demolition per uh, request. Okay. I agree. Yeah. I, how they're going to move it with all the power lines will be fascinating to find yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll learn more about the project. Okay. Okay. I, I think it's important to um, communicate that it appears that they are fulfilling. Mm -hmm the uh, request of the historical commission and that we not impede right exactly in any way yeah okay yeah i i don't know of another precedent where there's been a second step of it yeah exactly okay yeah. okay um and is that the that's is that the only announcement from you ben or are there yeah yeah um Okay. Not sure uh, if Robin was here. I'd be curious about an update on the CPA process. I, I lost track of that a little bit, but um, I think the town council is reviewing the recommendations at their next meeting on the 17th, I think. So um, these are the, the so, sort of um, final list from the yeah. committee. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Okay, interesting. And then do you know, uh, so what? you just said you may not know this, so I'll ask, <laughs> I'll ask yeah. you don't have to answer, but do you know when the town council then begins to take up the uh, recommendation? Um, I think it's on their meeting on the 17th or, or sorry, I guess that would be the, oh. it's on Monday, the 14th. I'm sorry, when you first said town council, I was thinking C-O-U-N-S-E-L. And then oh, gotcha. my question was about C-O-U-N-S-E-L. Oh, gotcha. So sorry yeah. about that. No, it's okay. <laughs> I get confused about that often. Uh, okay, shall we move to the writer's walk? Mm -hmm. Right, okay, yeah, so basically um, the contract was you know executed and um fabrication is underway Oops. nate sorry <laughs> can i talk is it going to be echoey no is, is that uh, is that better yeah yeah i think so yeah <laughs> you're here twice though there yeah I'm ha i was trying to log in with my phone and i was having trouble but i'm here now right. <laughs> okay <laughs> So before we move on then, uh, Nate, I, I don't know if you were here when Ben was telling us about uh, the status of 205 West Street. Can South Pleasant. South Pleasant. Oh, sorry, South Pleasant. Yeah. yeah, so the, um, you know, I think what happened was during the demolition hearing, we had mentioned to Amherst College that if, you know, if they, if they had other ideas during the demolition, they could come back. And even if they, and at one point, I think they said they might move the structure. And so Mark Andrews reached back out to staff uh, late last week, I think, and said that they ha they might be able to move it pretty quickly in the near future. Um, but when I you know I asked Rob Moore, the building commissioner, he said that moving it would actually be you know an act of demolition too because you're taking it off the foundation, and he didn't think it met 13.5 um, of the bylaw, so he recommended having them submit a new application. Uh, come with a new hearing, um, and I think Mark's, you know, questioning that. He, he hasn't said it outright, but he's asked, you know, to review the meeting, and I don't know, maybe, it, you know, I think maybe during the meeting we had said, oh, if you think you're going to move it, just come back, but, you know, Rob has a different interpretation of the bylaw, so. We had said, if you're going to move it, come back, and we would lift the delay, but I think if you look at the minutes, we, uh, we were in favor of moving it, and um, that was one of the 
possible ways of lifting the delay. So I don't see why they'd come and apply again for demolition. We didn't, we took that into account, I think. Right, yeah, I mean, I think Ben and I can talk to Rob again. I think, you know, without that context and, and I think the difficulty of the bylaw as, as written is that it doesn't, you know, in section 13.5, it says if the owner has made a bona fide effort to try to seek alternatives or if someone is willing to rehab, restore, or preserve, but it doesn't, you could say that moving it is restoring it perhaps in a different location, but the bylaw isn't very clear with those criteria or guidelines. And so. Um, I, I might comment, Nate, that um, the historical commission, I mean, even with the encouragement of staff with you from you, uh, has from time to time placed conditions on uh, mm -hmm. demolition delays. And it sounds to me like that was a condition. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, no, I agree it was a part of the discussion. So I think, you know, I had emailed Rob uh, and Ben to clarify the idea of coming back for moving it because, you know, in other demolition um, delays, we've, we've offered the same to owners. Yes, we have. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know if it's just moving a house is different than moving a garage or, you know, I, I, so yeah, Ben and I can go back and talk to Rob about it. Okay. This, um, I, I don't know. I guess my sense is that that's the business of the historical commission. Right. And we would like to fulfill our obligations. Sure. And then if Jane or um, Scheffler, or any, if anyone had the current minutes, I was trying to find the minutes and I didn't find, you know, that we had a few meetings, but I was trying to find the actual minutes from that hearing. I thought, you know, there's the video online from the Zoom recording, but I was actually also trying to find the minutes. And I, for some reason, I had trouble finding them. Mm -hmm. what, what, which meeting was that? Was that the October the, meeting? It was on May, May 28th, actually. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It was. Okay, let me. Yeah, and the the re the recording is on YouTube as well, but it's well, nice. To it is not. It's, it is not. It is. I found it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I thought I saw it there. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, but I yeah I, I took hand notes throughout the meeting, and maybe that's all that we have for minutes. Um, I'm not sure. I forget who was in attendance there. So, but I'm looking through my stuff because I can't remember if I was at the main meeting or not. Right. I can't remember if you were either. You know, I think that's fine, um, Jan and Jane. We can talk to Rob. You know, Rob wasn't aware of what was said at the hearing. Mm. And, you know, we have it through email, you know. It, yeah. Some of are they moving it onto campus or have they sold it for the dollar and they're moving it elsewhere out of town or in town or whatever? Because if it's on campus, it's a whole different thing, right? They don't have all the power lines to worry about and everything. And then. Well, yeah. I, mean, I think if they're coming forward with it from this, you know, into the street, South Pleasant Street, they do have power lines and one or two street trees. So unless they're well, one set, but if you go north or south, you get into many uh, dozen, you know. Right. Yeah. No. You know, they haven't. Um, Mark and I have emailed a few times, but they they he just said that someone may be willing to move it in January or February. But beyond that, I don't have any details, you know, where they're moving it or how they're moving it, if they're, you know, taking it apart or trying to taking move it. Taking it apart, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. I mean, if they're only t moving it in order to use the pieces for something else, that's a different kind of demolition than we had in mind. Right, right. So it'd be nice to have some clarification. All right, yeah, we've been going back and forth a little bit, so maybe Ben and I can reach back out with some questions. Mm hmm Okay, well, let me just ask, would it be like a public hearing for us to like review their mo moving plan at, and to, de de to decide to lift the delay or can that happen at a public meeting? It doesn't have to be yeah. a hearing. Or if, yeah, that's the thing with, if it was a new application, it'd be a new public hearing. And so right. in the past, we haven't done it that way. Okay. Uh, not if they're just updating us on what's going on during the delay we imposed. Right. Then it doesn't need to be a public hearing. Right. 
Okay, so this might take, well, I don't know, we're in kind of a funny time of year, but um, mm -hmm. it might take a, a week or so, or do you think this might come back to us in January? Yeah, I think I think we still could have whether or not it's a new application or if they were willing to come in in January just to give an update, we could maybe plan on that. And then, you know, in the next week, Ben and I can circle back with Mark at Amherst College and Rob and just, you know, see how to clarify the process. We still have a few months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Nate. Yeah. I'm going to go back to mute. Okay. And then I'll, I'll be listening now. Okay. So we were just uh, starting Writer's Walk update. Yep. Yeah. So at the Writer's Walk, their um, artifacts, the contract has been, you know, awarded and their fabrication is underway. Um, you know, they, they've sent me their like, you know, specs and the, the uh, kind of like construction document, if you will, um, and looked that over there. I'm working with DPW just to clarify that everything's okay with the you know footing and um there's like a breakaway post on there so because dpw will be doing the installation i just wanted to make sure that it's up to their standards and something that they can work with but otherwise um you know i think it's like a forget the exact timeline but a uh, couple of months to, to to the end of fabrication um they won't be able to install until fall. yeah yeah um, and then I will say in the meantime, uh, Nate set me up a meeting with John Olson, the professor at, at UMass. Um, and what came out of that meeting was basically, uh, the town or, you know, specifically me, I guess, was given like a, a login information for the Amherst historical website that he, that he's put together. Um, so that way, you know, if we need to make changes, um, to the website to better correspond to the writer's walk signs, then it's, you know, it's something that I can do from the back end and we don't need to bother John every time we want to change, you know, a block of text or a picture. Um, so yeah, I can, um, I don't know exactly. I haven't been involved in the conversations about what changes need to be made to the website, but I can, um, Let's Sorry. you and I have maybe a meeting and go over because there's quite a few things as simple right. as the Boltwood Inn name, things like that. There's yeah. a lot on there that's old. Yeah, exactly. Let's have okay. a time for the two of us to meet then. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, and then as most of you probably know that we have like a URL redirect to the Amherst Historical website. So that was set up, I think, a while ago. So it's amherstma.gov slash writers walk. And then that can be redirected really wherever we want. If, if for whatever reason, the Amherst historical website changes, then we can change mm -hmm. the redirect. But, um, you know, for, for the time being, it's, it's work, 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 working out well. Okay, great. Good arrangements. So, Should I be working on um, getting together the information to print that um, card for the visitor center? I mean, I guess it's not open right now, but that was going to be available simultaneous with the opening of the walk, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that was the intention. And I mean, how I mean, much is usually on those? Sorry? I'm just wondering, you know, Jane, you had said you had a name for them and you seem familiar with oh. them. Yeah, I, so as a card, it would be like a, just a two-sided thing and not a not a folding brochure. Right. Uh, yeah, and they don't hold all that much. If they're too dense, you know, it's just hard to use. Um, so it may be something that has a little, like a little illustration of the route and then- I was thinking the back. Back could be the map, yeah, and the front could say what it was, and the list of authors with the addresses, yeah, and just yeah. a little blurb that says, you know, take the tour, there's information, and gives a website thing, and then say each sign has a little bit, and that's about all. 
And yeah, yeah, they're not bookmarks, right. right? They're actually the size of a folded brochure. That's correct. that's correct. Okay, so that's what, like three by or four, three and a half by six or something, something like that. Yeah, maybe even it may be even taller. It might be. Oh, it'd be it'd be, it'd be like a folded sheet of eight by eleven. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it'd be eight and a half. Great. Okay. Okay, I'll work on some artwork. Would some artwork. Would FX do that then, or would we have do we have a graphic designer in the town that would put it together? Or Seth, I guess. We'd still have to have it printed. Print. Right. Um. And Seth yeah, there's would pull the map and make it match. We have a little money left. We had some money. I mean, if it if the numbers are still the same as they were, I don't know. Last time we priced this was You're right. There was enough money. There was like ninety dollars left or something for this. I don't know. Um, there might have been more than that. I can I'll, I can look at the CPA balance again. Okay. But yeah, if, if we have leftover money, I think that would be a great use of it. Yeah. To to go because I and I think it, the visitor center is closed now, but there is a little um, I don't even know what you call it, like a little stand outside where they have some information. Well, I wouldn't put them out there until we had the walk, right, right. The walk ready to go. And that's going to be in spring when the ground thaws and they'll be open by then. So um, how many do you usually print the first time for something like that? I don't know. It could be 500 to see how. Just 500? Okay. Just to see how it, it goes. Like 500 to 1,000. I, I think probably at that quantity, it's not a huge difference in Right. right it's probably about the same actually one or the other and then hold on to the artwork and have the same place repeat which be, yeah. okay okay great i'll work on that super thank you mm -hmm. uh so demolition delay bylaw and this agenda look Looks like it thinks we're going to make a lot of progress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cleared out the agenda. Discussing the process for approving it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Ben, I wonder, should we put it up as we discuss? Yeah. 13.4 to 13.9. Yeah, exactly. And I'm almost wondering if we should quickly just go over the process the, for kind of approving the bylaw first to just kind of um get that out of the way it might help us better understand what the timeline is okay. yep. um so because i've been i've been talking to uh, athena o'keefe who's the clerk of the town council about how this process works um mm -hmm. so let's see here so you know i'm assuming you know we maybe have this meeting and then maybe another meeting in january if we can have time to work on the bylaw I think we could have a solid draft together by at the end of our meeting in January um and then you know Nate and I were saying it might, it would make might make sense for then like staff and town hall to have time to review it you know whether that's uh Rob Mora and Chris Restrup the planning director and Nate and myself just kind of make sure it works with um you know the in terms of like the timing and um, and the process works for for town staff, it's something we can implement. Um, and then at that point, once you know staff feels comfortable with it, we could pre the first step. And I have I made a little flow chart for myself here. Um, and this is a very basic overview, but basically, you know, starting on the left, historical commission and town staff work together, and then we present you know it'd be a, a proposal sponsored by the historical commission um so we would make a presentation to, to town council to introduce the proposed um bylaw and then this is pretty automatic for them they would then refer it and um what's interesting about our this process is that we're we're both rescinding something from the zoning bylaw and adding something to the general bylaw because um, that that was the um, plan. And did did Jane Wall just disappear? Yes. 
Oh, there she is. Oh, sorry, I got <laughs> uh, Okay. You all may have solved everything in the interim. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Um, yeah, I was just saying that, um, you know, our plan was to add this to the general bylaw. Um, and I forget the exact reasons why. I think Nate can speak to that. But um, if that's the case, then we're rescinding something from the zoning bylaw and adding something from the to the general bylaw. And so those processes kind of play out in tandem. And so town council would apparently, yeah, they would refer the zoning bylaw change to CRC, which is the community resources like subcommittee of town council um, and the planning board that they would jointly review, you know, the impact to the town of rescinding this from the zoning bylaw. And then the two other subcommittees of town council, CRC and GOL would re review the general bylaw. And then- And GOL? They, yeah, that's- governance organization and legislation committee or something. Um, it's a subcommittee of town council members. And then, um, you know, say, you know, that usually town council puts like a deadline, like, you know, uh, come back to us with a recommendation in 60 days or 90 days. Um, and then with, with that recommendation in hand, town council would then review the um, proposals again, um, and then I think they need to have a first reading and then a second reading. Um, so it, it's a pretty lengthy process that might ultimately take a few months once from the time that we present to town council to the time that it's actually approved. And, you know, the, there's this initial presentation in town council, but then the subcommittees might review it once or twice. And so that those would both involve you know, either staff or and or historical commission members to attend and kind of partake in the meetings and be be there as a resource because it really is the you know historical commission who is sponsoring obviously this this bylaw um, and so and you know you this is the body that has to work with it and understands it better than anyone so it's important that you know members are there and you know Nate Nate and I can will be there certainly as well but to kind of represent what the goals are um and then you know if uh I then received this from Athena um who's the clerk of the town council and this is like the much more <laughs> much more involved uh flow chart of um how zoning bylaw amendments pass through town council and essentially you know there's this is that first meeting of town council that they hear the presentation from planning staff. And I think that can also mean um, uh, various boards as well. Um, and then, oh, maybe it's here. Yeah, town council receives proposed zoning bylaw amendment. They refer the amendment and then CRC and the planning board review that review it in tandem they each hold the public hearing. They send feedback to the town council. Um, and then they submit a report. And then there's a first reading from town council and a second reading. Um, and it's my understanding, I think a change to the zoning bylaw is two thirds majority of town council and a general bylaw is um, a, a simple majority of town council. Um, I don't have the, this is just for the zoning bylaw, this more complicated flow chart. I don't have, I don't know what the process is exactly for a general bylaw, but I imagine it's something similar. Um, so yeah, I guess I just wanted to preview what um, <laughs> the process looks like, it, you know, assuming if we can get a draft ready by February, it'll, you know, maybe be, something that happened, you know, works through the various committees over the, um, over the late winter and spring. Um, Thank you. That's a really helpful overview. Um, uh, 
I have a couple of questions. Maybe yeah. commissioners have some. Um, so I'd, I'd like everybody's input and advice on this. Um, I know there are, are a couple of town councilors who were interested in, in the existing bylaw and the revisions that we wanted to make to it. And um, uh, I'm wondering if what you think about um, having that, that sort of a preliminary conversation with those two council members, possibly at the January meeting when we think we've got a draft together to preview preview the bylaw for them or and, and preview for us um, reactions to it? What, what do you think? Sam, what is their perspective on this? Is it for a change or against a change or they're just open to what we have to say? I believe, and perhaps uh, Nate or Ben might have some more uh, better sense of this, but um, I believe they were concerned about how the current bylaw functions. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, I think we're interested in either modifications of the current bylaw or maybe tightening up the the application or the execution of the current bylaw. So the, so the people who think we have too much power and we're thinking of removing this, wasn't there some talk of that at one point? Um, I don't recall whether it was, you mean like removing the bylaw altogether? Us. Oh, us. Oh, no, I think, <laughs> no, I, don't think that was I think the, um, you know, Hilda had said at one point, she thought she'd heard Right. Rumblings that, you know, people may want to remove um, the commission. That I, that wasn't the case. I think, you know, some of the counselors, you know, they, I think they followed some of the more recent demolition applications and they also looked at the bylaw and they just felt that the bylaw, you know, kind of as we're seeing has some inconsistencies and maybe doesn't have clear enough guidelines to help with decision-making. So, I don't, I don't think that, you know, they wanted to remove it. I think they, you know, they were saying, you know, one counselor, for instance, thought that if you read the bylaw the way it um, is written and you took it literally, almost any removal of any part of a building or structure on a property, whether it was a shed or shutters or a screen door would actually need a demolition application. And so, you know, I think they just wanted it to be, they would want the process to be clarified and the criteria to be clarified. Okay, so they should actually be happy with what we're doing. Oh yeah, I think they I think they would be, yeah. Okay. If we change the 50 years to 75 or vice versa, I think there's going to be a fight over that no matter what we do. Yeah, I mean to me 50 years is a standard uh, age, you know, for in, in demolition applications and for other, you know, National Park Service documents. So I don't, you know, maybe when, as Ben um, illustrated the process, you know, staff will look at it and then the various boards and committees might And there, you know, I, I have a feeling that, you know, a number of perspectives or opinions may come out, you know, what are the thresholds for making something, submit an application? Is it, you know, age or is it another one? And I think the commission has discussed those. So I've often thought that there may need to be an accompanying memo describing yeah. some of the process the commission uh, went through and the topics discussed. You know, there could be one about what's the length of the delay, um, how can a delay be lifted, or what are the reasons for determining significance. So, you know, there's all these key pieces I think that everyone considers when they hear the demolition bylaw. Mm -hmm. you know, I don't, you know, in terms of the mechanics of how someone gets to a hearing, I don't know if the uh, council is as concerned about. The number of days between a notification and the hearing necessarily i think it's some of those bigger picture items yeah granted i like the process we've started with yeah you know i think the bylaw even just reading it now the draft we have is much clearer in terms of how an application even proceeds through the permitting process so i mean i think all just that the is title clear. is clearer yeah, yeah. Right. that's true yeah. i i think too like as we present the bylaw 
like being really clear about um, the various thresholds. Cause I think that that trips me up sometimes is it's like, just because a structure is 50 years old, that doesn't mean the bylaw, the it's gonna, a delay will be put on it. Like that's just the first threshold that's triggered. And then is it significant? Okay, it's significant. Is it um, preferably, you know, preserved. preferably preserved? So there's being clear that there's this multi-step process and the 50 year threshold is just the first threshold that we that's crossed um so maybe maybe i can make another flow chart for that so. <laughs> but um uh, hedy you're on mute sorry uh, ben i was just going to say I, I love the simplicity of this um and i can imagine it would be really helpful for us visual learners to um have an, another one that just put the flow chart for the multi-step process, I think, because Jan sent us something um, in relation to this as well. And, and that was, you know, anything that's visual is, is a good yeah. way to reinforce what may be very inelegant in terms of prose. <laughs> Maybe we can have an animated memo that goes to the <laughs> Yeah. Cartoon time. <laughs> yeah. They work. They're really good for getting ideas across. <laughs> All right, and yeah, I can certainly say I'll, I'll send this around as well. I, I, I just made it um, the other day, so I, um, I didn't have time to send it out, but it's a helpful tool. Ben, could you send us that other flow chart that, that you, that one? Yeah. Yes, that, yeah. that you, 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 lift, you lifted the thoughts from it and made, made a, a clear graphic. Right, it might yeah. It might be interesting for us to have both, so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Thank you. Okay, well, if we're going to finish this thing tonight, we better get. <laughs> so, um, one question about the previous flowchart, Ben, is that you've got uh, kind of a two way arrow between town staff and historical commission. So, that is a multi step interchange. I was, I was kind of interested in where. Um, you know, once we have a draft to review and then sta town staff have the review, it may be useful for the members of the commission to have the outcome of the yeah. staff review before it goes to town council. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of, in my mind, I was thinking um, at our meeting in January, hopefully we can um, have a draft that the commission feels good about. And then, um, you know, we can, then review it in town hall and then um, at a meeting in February kind of present, you know, what if, if any changes, um, if, if town staff had any recommendations and then kind of at that meeting in February okay. um, uh, feel ready and com complete. Um, and I had, I had preliminary Tentatively, sorry, tentatively so told Athena O'Keefe, who, you know, she um, manages the town council schedule that, you know, we might be ready in mid to late February for a presentation. And they're, they're already like putting their schedules together for then already. So um, I felt it was good to get at least a placeholder in the agenda. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, shall we wrap this up or try to wrap it up? <laughs> yep that's what we're here for yeah sorry did someone have their hand raised where did that go oh jane jane scheffler where did she go she's turned herself into a an attendee rather than a panelist oh, okay there she is Sorry, I was trying to take a screenshot of your thing and then I realized that my iPad was dying and so I had to call in from my phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha, okay. I'm all settled now. <laughs> Today uh, at work, I was for once not working remotely and ran out the power on two different laptops. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. How many meetings was that, Jane? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Five at least, I think. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so shall we look at the bylaw? Yeah, that sounds good. So let me, oh yeah. Um, so I did, I took the liberty yesterday of putting the our bylaw draft into the general bylaw format, if that's how we're planning to present it. So um, I, I kept like all the track changes, um, but I just put it into the new format. So the, the zoning bylaw has like, you know, those long number chains, like, you know, whatever, 13.2057 or whatever where this is a little bit simpler, you know, they would, they would assign it an article number. And then it's from there, it's just, you know, A, B and C for the sub first subheadings. And then it goes into, you know, one, one num numbers in mm -hmm. parentheses and then lowercase letters. And I think that's pretty much as far down the heading list it gets. Um, and then there's no there's no like bolds or anything bold letters it's it's pretty clean in that sense but um thanks for doing that that helps that saves us some time and makes yeah. it better to work from yeah. so as a reminder let's see we did the procedure two meetings ago and then we worked on the exemptions last meeting oh we're getting to the hard part yeah, and now we're getting to the standards for de designation as a significant structure. And then as a reminder, kind of going back to our overall process, this this criteria would be for town staff and you know the historical commission designee to 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 work on. It wouldn't come before the full commission. I can go back up to that. Um, Sorry, it's, yep. So the building commissioner shall within five business days forward a copy of the complete application to the commission designee. The application meets the demolition, definition of demolition. And then the historical commission designee and st town staff take five business days to determine if the application concerns a significant building as defined in the bylaw. So that's, so I guess we should probably put a reference to whatever section um, we're working on now. Reference criteria section. So then that that's the criteria we're working on right now is how do town staff and the designee determine significance? Um, Ben, would you mind zooming it a little? I have to sit back because I have my knee up and I can't get that close. Yeah. That really helps. Yeah. yeah. So originally, you know, and I, I only sat in on a few public hearings, so I'm not a, as well acquainted with the process, but, you know, there was kind of a, there was the, you know, if it's on National Register or pending for National Register designation, there's kind of general historical significance, there's architectural importance, and then geographic importance. And I think in, as it's written, if any of these criteria are triggered, um, it's automatically determined to be significant. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I guess maybe stepping back, like what, what works well in your in like what works well about this and what what doesn't work well or what what, what would we look to change? Can we compare the um, list that the Massachusetts Historical Society gave us on that? I should have pulled that up the booklet. I've got it somewhere. Oh right, so that's yeah. like the um. What are on their sample? What are their criteria. So that's the MHC like model. Yeah. Bylaw. yeah. Oh, I don't have it digitally, I don't think. Well, I'm sure I do somewhere actually. I might be able to pull it up. Yeah. I could hop over and get the hard copy, but it wouldn't do us any good. 
I think I got it pulled up. Yeah, I do. Hold on. Let's see here. Does anyone remember what page it's on? It's an 88 page document. Yeah. <laughs> it's over the halfway point. Yeah, I'm like, I know it's towards the end. I would go to like page 50 and go from there. Okay. I'm almost to page 40, so that would work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so by then, it's uh, into the appendices. Oh, really? Well, and I, I think the sample demo delay bylaw that they have is, is a, I thought it was one of the appendices or it was like right before it. Yeah, uh, there is a model demolition delay bylaw. It's on, it begins page 44. Um, procedure, administration, emergency de demolition. I, I, it does not have criteria. Hey Ben, I, I just forwarded that to you. Oh nice. Okay, thanks. Today's model. Yeah, so I think so one thing, um, this is Nate for anyone who's listening. So I don't know if I'm a, a um a panelist. The uh you know this is a big change in the bylaw. So you know we're doing this two step process where now this is an administrative step, right? So before the commission spent a fair amount of time at the hearings determining whether or not a building was significant and now this becomes something done by staff or uh, you know, designee of the commission. And I know that some of the, there's always been a few of these criteria that have um, been somewhat complicated to define. I'm not sure that we have to use this whole list, but I like the idea of you know, still keeping, you know, having say that there's historical piece, architectural and maybe geographic, and we could have you know, criteria from each of these that is then still part of the bylaw. And I think, you know, that some of these were taken when this was drafted from what the National Park Service has in terms of their uh, standards, the Department of Interior. So, and at the time it may have been used from a, 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 an older state template. So the language wasn't, and I think it was a combination of, of sources and also, you know, uh, Amherst town staff. But I mean, unless we want to change it all together, I do, I think we could, just take a few of these if we think the ones that are make sense and maybe rework them a bit, but I don't know if that's a good way to start, Ben. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at my okay. note from the Skelly's, Chris Skelly, when he talked to us and he had suggested taking out categorical designations for significance. Well, so, Yeah, only if he had said that if it if if it then became um, something that, uh, for instance, like the National Register thing, all of a sudden it becomes regulatory when really it's honorary. So, you know, he was saying sometimes the categorical piece is difficult because oh, because the category isn't stationary; it, it's sort of a movable feast. And okay. so, yeah, I mean. You know, the question is, if we're looking through the standards that are up on the screen, you know, is it within a National Register district or is pending? I mean, is that enough? Is that, should that even be part of the, the review? And Chris Kelly had said that, you know, just because it's in a National Register district doesn't necessarily mean that it would trigger a demolition review. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that it's significant. Well, what if we said it's a contributing structure within a National Register district? I mean, even yeah, you have to make a distinction too between significant and preferably preserved. And so, which does yeah. that apply to? Right. Is so this honor yeah. was within? So you're saying that a, con a contributing structure is tighter than simply being within an area. Right. So if this were one of the criteria that staff in the historical commission designee was using to determine if a structure is significant. I would want, if we're using National Register as a, as one still, I would want to say that it's a contributing structure within a National Register district or individually listed as a. I think that's reasonable. Me too. That makes sense because there's National 
isn't the South Common area on the National Registry? And there's towns, there's houses from like the 1970s there. Right, right. Or even, you know, in the Lincoln Sunset National Register District, you know, when, they, you know, those were adopted uh, districts in the 80s, and some were even more recent. So if homes were built in the 1970s or 80s, they would still be listed. Yeah. You, know, you list But they're property. not contributing to right. the, yeah, I like that term. That's a good shape. That's a good. So that would be A, would be, oh, no, wait, that would be, where is it? I lost it. Number one? Yeah, number one. Oh, up here. Okay, yeah, yeah. number one. It is listed on or is a contributing structure. Structure within. Within, yeah. Oh, right. But listed on, why do you need that? Wouldn't it be? Well, what if we said it is individually listed? So in Amherst, there's nine. Oh, that's a good point. Okay, yeah. Yeah. This is a really funny question, but it's a long time since I've done a National Register nomination, but last I did one, it covered you know, architectural historical significance. I don't remember there being a geographic category. So is that is that something that has maybe some of you have done one since I've done one, which is quite a long time now. Um, is that something that are we basically? Uh, my question is, <laughs> are we uh, what are we reviewing something that exists in another format in terms of sort of evaluating historic significance of a structural building and sort of trying to kind of echo that in terms of the way this is written is that is that sort of our goal so that it's kind of consistent across a number of different platforms for want of a better word um i think the our primary goal hetty is for it to be clear because the yeah. current bylaw that we have there's a there's a fair amount of like ambiguity and so I know one of the things we wanted is we wanted to make sure that the process was outlined in a way that was clear and easy to understand and I think if it happens to match other guidelines then great but I don't feel like that's the that's the main driver specifically for the geographic criterion not all uh, bylaws include that um, and that actually is the most difficult of the ones in our bylaw. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I, the, the others of them. Um, make sense. Make, yeah. They make sense or they look yeah. like other bylaws. I, yeah. I sort of feel like all of these subheads, you know, like A through E, that's an awful lot of them to mm -hmm. have to go yeah. through. When we go I through them, the very short time that I've been on the commission, it, it's not so much that the, these are, aren't useful considerations, it's that often the kinds of buildings that we're discussing somehow need to be lifted into a sort of significant category. And, and, and I take very seriously our job to kind of have that be revealed in the way that we think about all of this. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I now see what Jane is saying about it feeling very um, cumbersome, you know, and if I was a, a lay person in all this, it would be really overwhelming mm -hmm. because, because there isn't a kind of general statement at the beginning that says, you know, the way that we're understanding the term significant in terms of a structure, is is as follows and 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 if there was some kind of general statement maybe that would help people then be able to pick their way through all of these qualifying um qualifying factors is that the word i want yeah um because it because the other thing is it can be it can be any one of these things that trips the the designation of significant correct doesn't it doesn't have to be all of them it could be that's correct right yeah right. right but but to have to have one statement what we're doing is the statement is the categories here okay i, I don't think you can have a statement saying it's significant if this and this and this because there are subtexts to all of that um i think the thing that 
that I felt tripped us up at some of our meetings were was there it was was the ambiguity inherent in some of these criteria. Not so much that that we didn't state it at the beginning, but but just to, to make sure that there's not ambiguity in any of these um, sub subcategories. Give us give well, us in, in a sense we we do actually have a statement about what this is, and that's the section 13.0 intent and purpose. So that's we're using that to lay out that we're using these criteria in this process to determine if something is preferably prefer preserved or historically significant. And so we don't, we wouldn't want to put that any, I mean, I think the, we've outlined that at the best way that we can. And now we just want to show what criteria we're using in order to make that determination. Right, the, the purpose is, is really what Hetty was just talking about, but we don't need to restate it, in my opinion, under the standards. Okay. Well, I agree. Yeah. And I think um, I don't, I'm looking at the the draft that Ben sent out and I'm seeing the, on the, in his comment section, he's got the Northampton's um, significance mm -hmm. criteria. And I kind of want us to just steal all of that because it seems very clear <laughs> and it has a lot less uh, A, B, C's, D's, and E's than we do. <laughs> Yeah, I. Um, so this is the sum total of Northampton's, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. C, for example, combines a whole lot of stuff. From, yeah, associated um, with historic persons or events, broad mm -hmm. architectural, cultural, political, economic, or social history of the city or the Commonwealth. I, that, I think having fewer is better. Um, as long as it's clear to applicants that you know that 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 we can have an opinion about any portion of one of these it seems like it would be easier for us to parse because when we go through them one by one they're so broken into tiny bits yeah. that we all say well it might be this one but maybe it's more the next one and yeah. It all tied up in knots, whereas this would say, yes, it fits somewhere within C. Yeah. I agree with mm -hmm. that, Ben. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Ben, before, I think it, before I forget, can you just change structure to building on all those? Because we're using this term building instead of structure. So standards for designation as a significant building, isn't it? Isn't that what we've changed everything to? I think that's right. Didn't oh yeah, I'm like, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember the anymore. Word structure all the way through. I know we've been trying to be really clear with our language to make sure that we don't lose it, that we don't have anything that falls out of the net, which uh, I think is why I like the whole Hampton. Yeah, like, and- Significant because, building, not structure. Yeah, so- Okay, I'm just okay. seeing it. Do we have a, really? we have a definition yeah. for building? Yeah. As you say, do, do we- we made that decision a couple of meetings ago. Yeah. Okay, so we are using building, capital capitalized. Building. Yeah. yeah. So as we're working on this, it would just help to have that. Yeah. Clarify. Okay, so one thing, just um, uh, was just, before we even get on this, you know, above this section, Ben, all of a sudden we're defining significant alterations, which we don't have in the definitions. So, you know, the building commissioner may issue a building permit for significant alterations as defined in this bylaw, but we don't define them. We left them out, so. I thought we had alterations and we had significant building. Don't we have alterations? Go back up to the top. I think we had tried to simplify we, it. We, we, have one, we have a definition for demolition that includes alterations. alterations. Oh, but we don't say it with the capital A. Right. Oh, crap. You know, I think because we felt that during the discussion we had this, you know, why have, why introduce a new, a new term, right? All of a sudden, instead of a demolition, it's a significant alteration. So. Well, you know, we, under demolition, we have any act of pulling down, destroying, removing, or raising 25% or more of a building. Uh -huh. um, and so I think that would, that would cover it, wouldn't it? 
So let's go down to that section. Yeah, there. can we say demolition instead of significant alteration? Will it make sense there? Well, we could say something like demolition per the definition in section 13.1 if we Oops. were worried about it, right? Yes, that, that would be a solution. We're not going to have those numbers anymore. Uh, as defined above? Yeah. So for demolition as defined above, as defined in this bylaw, it says right there, mm -hmm. just change significant alterations to demolition. Yeah, yeah. as defined in this bylaw, perfect, yeah. Oops, sorry, my mouse is being weird, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> demolition, as defined in this bylaw. Mm -hmm. If proposed, demolition. Or activities. Yeah, or changes or whatever, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, good catch. So this is, yeah, replicate significant detail, is that, okay. Yeah, we did that just last meeting. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's keep one and then under two, should we lump them more the way NoHo has them? Yes. Can so, one and two A be lumped together? Yeah, I think two, actually, I think two A should just be removed. Yeah, I think, I think, we got that message from Chris Skelly that that should be removed. Great. But uh, B from Northampton, that, se that seems kind of relevant to number one. So should there be a 1A and a 1B? Yeah, because we're considering if it's listed or contributing as part of being historical importance, right? It's no longer right. Uh, True. Yes, that's right. Right. Yeah, I guess what does it mean to be found eligible by National Park Service or MHC or the National Register? So that that's probably a separate list of criteria to make something eligible. Well, we say pending. To me, that's this kind of a similar thing. It's maybe they've completed the forms, but it hasn't been officially approved or adopted yet. I don't. What about this Massachusetts State Register of Historic Places? Is that different from National Register? Should we list it too? It is different. Yes, we should list it also. Yeah. Well, I think that's the only change you need because otherwise what we say is essentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah te I don't know the technical steps for a building to be found eligible by the Park Service. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what's involved in that. So I don't know if it ha really has meaning. Well, if it's listed on or subject of an applic pending application, I think that would cover it. Yeah, I, I agree, Jan. I think so too. I think that's actually clearer. It is. Yeah. Because otherwise, so we said Massachusetts State Register of Historic Places after the National Register, and I think we've got B taken mm -hmm. care of. Mm -hmm. And 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 the sentence is subject of a pending application. Period. Yeah. So otherwise, it's redundant. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I was just noticing in, in Northampton section B, they at the end here, they do have or has an application pending. So yeah, well, we're saying that all we need to do is we don't want to use their exact wording. It'll look yeah. like we lifted their exact wording. All we want to do is add Massachusetts State Register of Historic Places. Yeah, you can just cut and paste. Okay, Massachusetts State Register of Historic Or is the subject of a pending application for listing on the national or state register? Oh, well, for such listing or for, yeah, yeah make it on, simple. On said, said listing, said registers? No, yeah. of a pending application for such listing, period. Okay. For such listing. Oh my God, I'm sorry, you guys are all watching me struggle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep wanting to do it. <laughs> or of a pending application for such listing. Yeah. Yeah, period. That, that's clear, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so then, yeah. Maybe we could just 
wipe out all the rest of it, copy and paste C and D. And play with them. Slightly change the wording. Yeah, I agree because why have the three categories, historical, geographic, and whatever the other one, cultural, when you can make it much simpler? Agreed. Yeah. I especially yeah. like, I, I feel like the thing if, about uh, borrowing and tweaking some of the Northampton bylaw is I feel like it captures everything we're trying to capture under those three categories without us having to define each of them individually. Mm -hmm. We could walk through, we could just walk through the ones we have um, below and keep them and combine them or just see what we think of them. For instance, the, the A we thought we were going to delete the. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gone. And I think B actually is a worthwhile and it's similar to. Well, that, yeah, that comes in. Can you scroll slightly up so we can see there they too, yeah. Well, but I, we so cover. And the C, yeah. That, yeah, I was gonna say that would be covered under C for the Northampton one. And I feel like that actually, C under the Northampton guidelines, I think um, gives us better, uh, flexibility because I think there are some buildings that we've talked about that like they're kind of on the border with some things whereas this would would kind of clarify it and it it talks about it um, being related to a person event or a broad architectural cultural political like I feel like it really covers all of the things that we want to make sure we capture it takes care of historical and cultural, and the other one takes care of architectural. Yeah. If and just change city could, to town of the Amherst. We could throw in the word heritage. If I like that. I, mean, I think that may be the only thing that's missing is heritage. Yeah. What about um, single historic event? Oh, that is there. OK, no, they, they yeah. got it all. <laughs> Why don't you move it a copy and move it over and let's tweak it and see if we can make it sound a little different. Okay, so that'll be two. Ah, auto change. It said one again. I don't know why. I know. <laughs> let's remove the words structure to begin with yeah mm -hmm. take the building no leave building building mm -hmm. oh i see you're capitalizing okay i like the one or more mm -hmm. i do too social history of the town of amherst and i would capitalize commonwealth i don't see why yeah. the city capitalized in commonwealth not <laughs> So Jane, is this where you wanted to add heritage? This yeah. is where I was thinking about it, but does heritage mean any more than architectural, cultural, political, economic, or social? I think, no. it, I think it does for some people who mm -hmm. may have encountered buildings of architectural significance or historical significance in the context of something like the Blackstone Valley His Heritage Corridor. So the word has come, has, come to be a, a sort of take on things that were used to be just history or cultural resources or architectural history, right? That's, that's sort of what I'm thinking that heritage studies, I mean, it, it's, it's, I think it's just a way of sort of pulling in another term for what it is we're trying to define. So then would it would it have a modifier or would it then follow this this series of modifiers and end up at economic or social history or heritage? Good question, Jane. Actually, I don't think it really adds that much once you mm -hmm. say that. If you wanted to have it as a general term to reinforce the idea of historic, you could put it up um, at the very beginning, if it meets one or more of the following heritage criteria. 
Oh. We could make it really problematic if we <laughs> <laughs> put it right after uh, one or more historic persons or events, comma, heritage, comma, or with the. <laughs> no. <laughs> that no, would be. No. <laughs> that would be very troubling, I think. I would leave it out for now. Let's do the next one and then see. We still need to tweak this so it doesn't sound like it's Northampton. Okay, so on that note, the importantly associated with, I mean, I do like the way the bylaw says has character, interest, or value. I mean, is there a way to qualify importantly associated with a little more? I mean, I just, you know, or another way to say that, I, I, I guess, you know, my thought would be, um, you know, once staff starts using this, what are, what does that mean, really? What does what mean? Importantly, Importantly associated, associated with? with. Yeah. Well, that's, so Nate, I think maybe you've uh, put your finger on how we can use heritage. Um, mm -hmm. That it is, um, if you, let's see, how was I thinking of this? Um, Here's the building the has yeah. character, interest, or value as part of the heritage of the town of Amherst or Commonwealth. And then we can go into yep. importantly associated with persons or events and then follow that with architectural, cultural, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we end up with three parts combined into one sentence, which Great. Basically, space saves us um, paragraph headings. What about if the building has character, interest, or value associated with one or more historic persons or events? Et cetera? Well, that, that's a way of defining what importantly associated means. Yeah. yeah, I think the other was getting, no offense, a bit wordy. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to parse out kind of what each of those mean, character associated with one or more, interest associated with one or more. Character like really heads yeah. up, heads towards the architectural style. Yeah. It? Interest is what people's personal value about it or, or personal investment in it. And then value would be literally mm -hmm. how it contributes to those. So I don't know whether character fits there or whether it should be under um, D or what would be our three. Mm -hmm. How about just value? The building has value in association with one of the one or more historic blah blah blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think again we're we're looking to simplify, and the, the more we add, you know, we, we think that we're being helpful by adding stuff, but I think this is what the problem was in the in the reception of the of the document in whatever it was, town council, that it just feels like it adds the kind of complexity that doesn't help establish what we want it to establish. But I do agree with Nate that importantly is a, is a very vague word, which yeah. is why I think value might be better. It has value. The building has value in association with, and then what we were we can still look back at the word heritage at some point. Yeah. But. Okay. Is I mean, is it as simple as just getting rid of importantly? No, it be has value. Okay. Instead of is associated. In association. Yeah. What does that look like to y'all? Maybe you could place the word heritage in brackets somewhere so that we don't completely lose track of it. We're not thinking yeah, that's good. Okay. okay. Here, something? Or you said that was the that was... Yeah. Yeah. Oops. 
events. But maybe after economic. Oh, economic. Um, or heritage and social history of the town of Amherst. You know, it's so hard because the word heritage means something so different here than it means, say, in Britain. Um, I mean, there it's actually a separate subject that's taught in school. We don't right. have that here. I'm just wondering how loaded a term it is. Let's leave it there mm -hmm. for now and do the next one and then rethink it. Okay. So I just have a question about the number one, we ended with a period, but should it should it actually be like semicolon and or? Yeah, it should. Because it there's a colon above. Yeah, sorry. That was my fault. That should be a semicolon. Yeah. Right, okay. And Great. then three, this is more the architectural one. Right. Pick out structure. And then we can simply um, reorder those characteristics. Right, to make it not look like <laughs> You've done this before when you lifted from the encyclopedia in fourth grade for your paper. I was gonna say, I don't know that it makes a difference. <laughs> um, could you scroll up again for a second? Up, yep. Uh, it's, it doesn't mean it's significant. Um, I wonder if um, instead of using the word important, we should use significant with a capital S. The building is historically or architecturally significant because that's what we're defining. I guess that's using the word to define itself though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um... How could we say again, the building has historical or architectural value and just like we did before in terms yeah. of the grade style method. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just going to scroll down to um, what we previously listed for architectural importance. Um, so the envi built environment of a group of people. I think it's all in D. Yeah. I would just make the wording kind of match number two. Yeah. So we're using significant there. Oh, down below. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's actually, I started to say that, but I think that's a mistake to define significance with the word significant. Yeah. You know? That we're gonna have to cha change that if we leave that in. Right. Well, like, this is replacing it. Number three replaces everything below. Right. All right. right. So could you try has value? Yeah, and then yeah. has yeah. value in terms of period. As historic. Um, the, back to the beginning. Historical or architectural value. Yeah. As historic or architectural value. Oops, so close. Period. Is it historic or historical? I never know. <laughs> historic. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I never know for the historic oh, no, commission I, or I yeah. Know, yeah. historical value or architectural. Well, it would be more consistent if it were historical and architectural. Yeah. Yeah. Just one's an adjective and one's a, a noun, right? No, maybe not. I don't know. No. Well, historic is used so differently in many ways. Okay, so it's either gonna... I would remove terms of. Yes, I agree. Just in period style method. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or, or, or as to either one, but in terms of, I think is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then method of building construction. What did we say below instead of that? Innovative something or other? Method of building construction. Elements of architectural design, significant innovation. Craftsmanship, which represents a significant innovation. Or the one above it, um, 
Yeah. You say it embodies those distinguishing characteristics of an architectural type, period, or method. Method. That's better. That's the word I'm looking for. We used method instead of, oh no, it is method of building construction. Somehow that feels awkward. I just looked up historic versus historical on Grammarly and oh, historic describes something momentous or, in, or of import important in history, whereas historical simply describes something that belongs to an earlier period of history. So okay, they are so both, both adjectives that have very similar meanings and often are confused. Still, they are not simply two spellings for the same word. <laughs> oh, very helpful. <laughs> well, I think what the fits here. Yeah, historic fits here better. Yeah. Oh, I was saying historical. Oh, did you? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's not momentous. It's just the age in terms of period style or method. That's it fine. Pertains. Okay. Yeah, pertains yeah. to. Recognize architecture either. So. Okay, I think this is fine actually. What do you, I? I did like. The, I like the word craftsmanship down yeah. here. I don't know if what you yeah. all thought of that. Um, sort of innovative craftsmanship. I mean, that I guess that gets into a building method. But it doesn't have to be innovative to be right. significant. It That's can just true. be very typical of an era. Yeah. So, you know? OK. Period. Is, is the method, method of building is not the same as the architectural or craftsmanship construction you know it, it speaks to to the the um architect or the builder having a reputation in his or her own right and i think we lose that a little bit by method of building Could although we... recognized architect or builder i guess that's okay yeah it's in there i mean yeah. this method of building construction means something like clabbered versus for construction or something right it's not it's not really about innovation there. So would it be useful to put craftsmanship after building construction? Because craftsmanship is not quite the same as recognized builder. Craftsmanship is about the product and the recognized builder is about the individual. But method of building construction should immediately be followed by the association with the recognized architect. How about after style, comma, craftsmanship, comma, method of building construction? How about there? That's good. Sure. I think style and craftsmanship kind of go together too. Yeah, they do. And that, I think that covers, I think down below there was something about artistic value, but I feel like style and craftsmanship mm -hmm. covers that. Yeah, it does. Architectural design, de detail, materials, or craftsmanship. I think that's all covered under that. Yeah. Detail is pointless, really. Yeah. OK, now how can we make it? Can we move it around a little so it doesn't look like Northampton? Um, switch style and period. How about the building alone or within the context of a group? comma, yeah. has historical or architectural value, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to um, just think about what this implies, the group of buildings, the context. That... Well, you know, if it's like some sort of 1930s apartment buildings, and there's just one of them that's falling apart, you want to say, mm -hmm. well, this is a representative, or there's only one right. left, you say it represents a larger context, I don't know. I guess, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. It could be that in the context of a group of built, so it seems to me that right now we're aiming toward eliminating the geographic criterion. I don't know if we- Yeah, it's up under two, but, yeah. But in the context of a group of buildings could- Yeah, that's true. Could be like the colonial buildings of a certain era in this town or something. But we can't lose the either by itself or in the context of a group of buildings. So the building. Alone or. Or in the context of a group of buildings. Mm 
I would just say, or in the context of a group, you don't need buildings again. Mm -hmm. Comma. Mm -hmm. and you take out the end there of that whole thing. I, I think it might be smoother to keep group of buildings. You think? Yeah, I, think I, I, I over. like that. Okay. Yeah. It gives a visual. <laughs> but, are, but are these capital B buildings? <laughs> <laughs> no, not here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, no, it wouldn't because it's, yeah, it's plural. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I like this. What I feel like our next question is about whether we want to keep like one piece of that geographical context that we have in the current bylaw and then jettison the thing that's so vague that and, and troubling. Uh, okay, we have Square Park, other distinctive area, and then we have the familiar visual feature. Let's look at two again and see if those are implied. I think, yeah, as we look up at two, I, I, I believe that there's been objection to number one under geographic because mm -hmm. it can be interpreted as any place at all. Oops, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or other distinctive area. What about unique location? Let's see if we can fit that into number two. Has I mean, could it be what are more historic persons or events? Could it, be, could it be persons, places, or events? Or after events, unique location, comma, or with the broad, blah, blah, blah. Because that's narrower. If you just say places, that's pretty vague again, right? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, especially when you're talking about a town that was founded in the 1700s, like, OK, so everything here is historically significant <laughs> because of when, it, because when our town was founded. Well, that's why something like unique location, we could say, you know, it's specifically because it's always been right in front of town hall or something like that, you know? That's yeah. specific and unique. I feel like it, and it takes away the ambiguity. I'm thinking about the um, the vet's office that yeah. we had a demo delay hearing for. Right. And that one was, that one ticked that because it's right off of Kendrick Park or whatever. And like, there's no... There's no cultural value in saving that building, but we had to still think about, I mean, we, we still had additional considerations because of, because it was. And it also implies that whole question of streetscape without saying it. Unique location is the streetscape. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I would add that. Okay, so the building has value in association with one or more historic persons or events. Unique location, put it there. Yeah, comma. Okay. Her her we still got heritage hanging out there to dry. Historic persons or events unique. Would it, be, would it have to be plural or no? No. You, if we... So it's only in we, one location, the building. Right, yeah. If we... If we change it to say the historic persons or events, unique locations, or with broad architectural yada yada yada, does that encapsulate what we're hoping to capture with heritage? I think it does. So then we don't have to have leave it hanging out there anymore, but we're still covering it. Because I don't know about you, Jane, but when I write about heritage, I always qualify it cultural heritage, you know, architectural heritage, whatever. I, collective heritage. I never use it just generally by itself. I, I agree. Uh, yeah. It could be it could be at, at the end of social history um, if we want to keep it. Economic so history. Broad architectural, history. culture, political, economic, or social history. What about and, social heritage? What about taking history out and putting heritage? I think yeah. we need to end up with we need to change the order, I believe, so that we end up with cultural heritage. Mm, and not an Oxford comma. And, and, and move social earlier, because social yeah. heritage is not a meaningful 
phrase? Social, comma, political, economic, and cultural, or cultural heritage. Yeah. And then they could, anybody who reads it could take heritage to apply to any of them or just cultural if they want to. It's a nice, <laughs> ambiguous it's sentence. Catch all. It's a, it catches everything. But the social socialist history should still have history as part no. of it. No? no, I don't think so. The heritage as catches is a catch all at the end. That's the idea, but it fits better with cultural. But architectural right. heritage, there is social heritage, there is political heritage. It's just that those aren't typically used as phrases. Right. Okay. Yeah, that it it kind of implies. I think it using it this way, heritage has more to do with value than than history and history yeah and i like the idea of like the economic heritage of amherst yeah. you know when you think about the kurok area or something that fits you know i like it see we got your word in and it was all the better for it yeah um just one you have a question uh or or just throwing this out for consideration is um when we say unique location that implies context, and down in three, we've got context in a group of buildings. But as to period style craftsmanship method, building construction. Uh, it, it more relates to the, the style, the architecture. The other relates to the historical value of the unique location. Is that what we're after? The, that the location itself or the building in it's in that particular location? I think two refers to its general placement within the town as a value. And the other refers to whether the building by itself or as part of a group has architectural value. I think they're two different things. Oh, I was thinking the, okay, I see because of the end of the sentence, I was just yeah. thinking. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think Jane, Jane, um, after I think location, you need a comma. Um, yeah. I think, Jane, your question was a good one because, you know, going back to 205 South Pleasant Street, for instance, you know, is, when we talked about it, you know, we had mentioned how, for instance, that building is part of a streetscape. So Hetty had said, you know, I brought up it's part of a streetscape. And so it's setback, it's architectural style you know the size scale all those things and so you know if um you know if staff were if now this becomes an administrative step you know how would someone look at that you know what you know what you know is that you know what how would they if they read these would they be able to make that determination based on these um criteria here well, that, um, what you're talking about would certainly come under three, not three. two. Yeah, my immediate reaction to that, Nate, is thinking that it would be easy just to skip over the unique location piece of number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that's not what it means. That's not what we're talking about with unique location here. Because that building could have had the same kind of significance placed any number of sites at the town, right? that little house would have still been considered the same if it were all anywhere in town. Right. It's not, it's, it, it's not a unique location, but it's the issue with that building. Right, I just wanna make sure that's clear because, you know, kind of like um, the terminology, you know, a, um, like a, a visual feature or a familiar visual feature, you know, five years from now, what, what are people going to say when they say unique location? Are they going to say every location is unique or is it this specific, um, you know, it's, it's really a specific, it's, it's specific as it relates to certain structures or buildings, not. Hmm. You know, yeah, to tell the truth, I don't think it would hurt to have another, to have a number four. I mean, we've consolidated a whole lot of stuff here. And if it, if there is something we want to say about location, I I think that could, as long as we're clear about it, that could be a fourth, and that would get us out of copying Northampton. <laughs> <laughs> a most important point. 
Well, I think the context of a group of buildings is really clear. So I think that that helps a lot. I mean, that sets, you know, how it relates to its surroundings. Um, it does say alone. Um, Well, if, if you wanted to move unique location into a number four, we could go back down to the geographic context section and pull back out the familiar feature thing, but use the term streetscape, which I think people understand better mm -hmm. right away. And we could just have one sentence that said something like, um, the building by its unique location is, in, is essential to an established streetscape or something like that. I don't know, would, would destroy an established streetscape, something like that, and that's it. I mean, just have the one point. Uh, yeah, so there's nothing that. wrong with the word represents an established and familiar streetscape. Right, that would be good. The center of the community the as a character. whole. Yeah. Yeah. The building, as to its unique location or its physical characteristics, represents an established and familiar, familiar streetscape. streetscape. Yeah, in the town of Amherst. Right. Okay, so feature of the streetscape or just no. streetscape? Just streetscape. I think it's if it's too wordy, people are are scared to read it all and think Oops. they understand it. Yeah. Um, is and do we want village center or the community as a whole? Uh, no. We're just okay. talking about we're just talking about where where it sits. Yeah, because the unique location would imply if it's in a village center or whatever. Right. And then, say in the town of Amherst. I mean, I guess that's implied that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I, almost, I almost read it as its unique location on the street, like whether it's set back, like the same, like nicely set back from like the, the road with like street trees and yeah. forms as, as opposed to it being in a significant location for lack of a better word, like on the town commons or on the South well, Amherst commons. I think all of that can be true. But maybe yeah. just a familiar streetscape in the town. Otherwise, it's 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 hanging, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Period. That's the last one. Then, and the one above would have to have a semicolon with an or. But you know, I think people have been upset with a common visual feature, though, because that means anything, if it's there long enough, becomes a familiar visual feature. So, I wasn't necessarily advocating for that. I just was trying to get at, you know, what are we yeah. trying to say about location. So I have two, yeah, thanks, Nate. Uh, two two follow-up questions to that. And one is, do we need physical characteristics in here? Because that's covered by all the architectural uh, criteria above. And then I feel like represents is a word that is too broad in this case. That, Let's move it up to number four and play with it. I'm having trouble seeing it. Yeah. Um, what about if, if the physical characteristics here are referring to the familiarity, not the style, right? Is, so is it the, it either where it is or the way it looks uh, is the, is the familiar streetscape. I don't think that is referring to like historical style, right? So physical characteristics within its unique location. Hmm. Embodies instead of represents. Yeah, unique location or its physical characteristics. How about just its unique location or appearance? Embodies of established and familiar streetscape. I, I, yeah. Um, Simplify it, you know. I know that's probably still vague, but it's it sounds different from the architectural things appearance a little bit more. I I, I still feel like embodies 
it, um, somehow the, the construction of this sentence dissociates embodies from a specific place. In other words, you know, I could have a, I could have a, a house on the north end of town that is in a unique location that embodies No, this is the point. I could have a house on the north end of town with certain physical characteristics that could embody a familiar streetscape, but it might not necessarily be the streetscape it's on. Mm. Is, would I, it be I, simpler to just say the building is is situated in a unique location or is that's mm. what we're getting at, right? The building is located. In... Yes, that is what we're, yeah. Or the building um, has value because it is situated in a unique location. Mm -hmm. And embodies a familiar. Or instead of an established and familiar, how about establishes a familiar streetscape? There you go. Nice. Nice. You could do serves to establish. Well, let's not let, let's keep it from being wordy as much as we can. Um, Contributes to a familiar streetscape. <laughs> well, but it it's the thing itself makes that familiar streetscape, right? Okay, it, it's an active, not a passive thing. And then then establishes sounds like the right word. Yeah, I was going to say, especially because establishes would also cover that example you just gave, Jane, where it's like it, there might be something in North Amherst that's like really indicative of a style of architecture that you typically see in South Amherst, but it's unique because it's in North Amherst and then it then it's covered. Right, which is that's what I was responding to. And also, could we try appearance instead of physical characteristic? <laughs> Are always in the way. I like this. Mm -hmm. Clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, short, sweet, and to the point. Much better. Take that, Northampton. Yeah, we got to send it to Northampton to say, we've done some editing. Would you like to update your wording? <laughs> <laughs> we've improved upon yours. Downloads. What are we calling this now? Draft December 9th. Oh, well, Ben's doing that. The other thing I wanted to bring up is the, uh, so, you know, this is now an administrative staff we have for, um, you know, criteria that staff or a commission designee would read. We don't give um, this step a lot of time in the timeline, in the process. And so, you know, sometimes an applicant doesn't, provide any information on the property or the building or any of its history. Staff can do a little research. Mm. Uh, but some, you know, sometimes it, you know, we might reach out to special collections or, you know, it might just take a few days to try to. Wouldn't that be in the next step, preferably preserved? Well, no. So oh. for instance, I, I guess the question would be, for instance, for number two, the building has value Oh, you know, I see. Like persons or events, like how do we know if yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, um, good point. So, are you saying that timeline doesn't give enough time to establish that? I, don't think, I just, I just, I don't. You know, I guess. Um, I think that some. I think that some members of the community will be upset that this is no longer a role of the commission, and I just want to make sure that we're providing ample time to not give this piece. You know. Uh, the short end of the stick, right? So we're not trying to rush the determining significance. So we're giving staff or, you know, even, if, I mean, you know, staff even- Staff and one representative always from us. Yeah, yeah. And it could be that, what if someone else on the commission wants to, you know, if, we, if there was enough time for the step uh, and someone else on the commission wanted to join in on the research, they could. I mean, I just want to make sure we have mm -hmm. the ability to make sure, you know, to know we've done this thoroughly. Well, I guess if there's any question, it needs to come to a meeting. It does say that in the bylaw that if it, this yeah. is in, if this is 
kind of can't be determined, then it just goes to a hearing, but. Yeah, then it's considered significant and goes to the question of whether it should be preserved. Right. So does the bylaw, uh, if we look at that language, does the bylaw um, uh, suggest that if, you know, in the case of like insufficient time, um, because right now it's only five days to determine if it's a significant building. Now, so if there is disagreement or insufficient information, information, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. What? If, but what if it's what if a building is just not? I don't know if it's if it's just hard. It's just hard to find the information, but it it doesn't. It's not a significant structure, or like like I, I almost feel like it would be better be better just to add a little bit more time to that timeline. Yeah, but I mean, if you're looking, there's a chance it's significant. You wouldn't be yeah. doing any research if it were clearly yeah not be considered significant, right? Right, but I do think five business days. No, I mean, no, I agree with Ben. So if an application comes in, we'll see what, are, you know, typically what has been provided. If not, then, you know, I go to the GIS to see, you know, we'll list if it's been inventoried or not. You know, we can look through our files fairly quickly, but sometimes, uh, you know, there may not be a lot of information. There may, you know, you may go through the deeds and you find, see a name and then you, you know, it just, you know, if staff's busy for a few days, it may just be that five business days is not a lot of time to Let's do. Let's make it 10, give it two weeks instead of one. There's no problem with that, right? But I think that's a good idea, yeah. I because the, 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 the clock days. starts ticking on the public hearing after that, it starts at 20 days, right? It's not gonna impact the notification for a public hearing. Right, within another 20 days, right? So mm -hmm. they have 35 days from the time that they get it. Mm -hmm. That's where we are now. Yeah, it seems fine. Mm -hmm. Then we don't have to deal with insufficient information. Right. right. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I think the staff is always, uh, could always ask an applicant for more time. And if they get it in writing for any of these steps, then that's, you know, that then, and, you know, the applica applicant allows that. But Right, I hate to think that every application we get, we would need to be asking. So I think ten business days to me seems, you know, that's the you know that's the maximum. I mean, if something is less time, sure. Okay, yeah. that seems very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel better about that. Just so we're not. So then, did we get to the end? And now we need to add preferably preserved. We need to take all this other stuff out, of course. Yeah. Goodbye. Oh, now we have demolition. But we still, but before we get to demolition, we have to do preferably preserved. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Do we have a model for that? <laughs> I was just going to ask that. Sheesh. So, yeah, in my, um, I think last meeting you guys asked me to reach out to Chris Skelly with some questions and one yeah. of those questions was what other what do other towns use as their criteria for preferably preserved and he he was like not aware of any other towns that really had a criteria laid out for <laughs> for that how to make that decision which was pretty surprising yeah. um and he, and he he went as far to say as you know, keep me in the loop about what you guys come up with because we can share that with people in the other historical commissions to help them think about this. So, um, I just I, looked at Cambridge and it says a determine that a determination that a significant building is preferably preserved relative to the proposed replacement structure is made if the commission finds it's in the public interest that the building should be preserved. Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of that. It's like the public <laughs> interest. Um, it gives us a lot of power. Yeah, and so then um, one of the other questions that uh, yeah, I guess Nate had me ask Chris was about you know what information can the commission consider in their decision, you know, such as the future plans for the for the property. Um, I forget what the other stuff was. You know, like how how does it fit in with the master plan? Because I think 
previously we we weren't supposed to consider that in our determination of significance but i think chris skelly implied said that we could use that information for the yeah the I think preferably, it's preferably preserved and um, it could be a leverage tool right right um so that right now, do we have a section for preferably preserved or would no, this be this a new? No, Okay. I'm just looking at all these other towns and they all have, or a lot of them have criteria for determining significance, but when it comes to preferably preserved, it's what the commission determines to be in the public interest. I, well, I think that should be one of the, I mean, we could just for the moment start a list of the possibilities within the document, um, within the public interest is one. And I noticed uh, there's something here about um, the impact of, this says the impact of the scale and massing of a new addition on the streetscape and neighborhood as a whole, but it could be the 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 impact uh, of the oh, loss of the existing building, or it could be the impact of rehabilitation of the existing building. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking at town after town. It's so interesting. There are a couple of things in here about the condition of the building that it can be prefer preferably preserved because the building is in good condition, but mm -hmm. a building, a similar building that's in poor condition would not necessarily be prefer preferably preserved. Hmm. So, so I pulled up ours or we use theirs. I was going to say, I just pulled up the Concord, Massachusetts demo delay mm -hmm. bylaw, and they have preservably, preferably preserved defined as an historically significant building or structure, which the CHC, which is the Concord Historical Commission, uh, determines would be better preserved than demolished in accordance with the standards set forth in section yada yada below. Which are the significant ones, significance. Uh, and then that is. Um, yeah, and the, the section basically just refers to the four points we just made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do like the idea. I think that if we don't have standards here, then uh, it's a the Achilles heel of the bylaw. So yes. I like the idea of actually saying, uh, Ben, if we went back up to the purpose of the bylaw, I mean, it's kind of reiterating the purpose, but right at the beginning, we have a purpose of the demolition bylaw. So, um, Constitute or reflect distinctive features of the architectural, cultural, economic, or social. Encourage history. sustainability. Perfectly preserved should be capitalized. Mm -hmm. Are and you buildings? Oh, so then I'm I'm looking at the Cambridge demo demo delay bylaw too, and so they they have determining a building significance and then determining if it's preser preferably preserved. So they say a determination that a significant building is preferably preserved relative to the proposed replacement structure is made if the commission finds that it is in the public's interest that the building should be preserved. Yeah, that's the first one I read to you. Yeah, I mean, we- Oh, right. That's the only thing, it's just public interest? Yeah, yeah, and the, was, it about the replacement. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking the purpose here, the purpose here says it a little bit too. I mean, we say the public welfare, mm -hmm. um, the purpose is protecting, you know, streetscape neighborhoods, distinctive features. I mean, I think, you know, I think having, I like the idea of public, whether it's the public good or public interest or public welfare, mm -hmm. the idea of preserving the massing or streetscape and that would allow the commission to ask what's being in, you know, if they're going to demolish it, what's the replacement going to be? I mean, what if someone's replacing it with another architecturally appropriate building? 
or inappropriate. Um, or inappropriate, right. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so did we, did we pull this purpose from the intent and purpose on, there's an intent and purpose on page 44 of that um, demolition delay guidebook and it, um, yeah, it looks like we did. Yeah, okay. Cause it, that's a pretty good statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I took the intent and purpose from the, uh, from that one and I sort of, I, I tried to mash in the other ones that we had, but I think most of it is just what yeah. Chris had in the sample mm -hmm. because it seemed like the clearest way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I almost feel like a few statements in the purpose could be restated as guidelines for determining preferably preserved. And also we could talk about, you, you like that section about how it's of value to the town up in the statement of purpose. We yeah. could explain what those are. We could say, that it, you know, it's economic, educational, environmental advantages, buildings as historic landmarks, buildings as architectural icons of the town, you know, I don't know, the cultural significance the town is spoken through its, I mean, we could, we could just build that out a little bit, mm -hmm. justify it. Um, yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I think it has to say a little bit more than just the public good. But I like that mm -hmm. as a starting point. But explain what the public good is, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need a we need an opening statement, and Concord seem to seem to be strong, but leave us open for us to list all these other things. Mm -hmm. Ben, can you sorry? Can you just go back up to the definition? I just want to see what. Um, yeah. What we just say for preferably preserved. Not to change that. Mm -hmm. Would we, would we just expand this definition to list uh, concepts that? Oh yeah, and then we could just at the bottom say that we could go back to what the other ones all say. If we had it defined here, we could just say what the commission determines, if the commission determines it. Mm -hmm. That's an idea. I, I, I still like maybe expanding it as, you know, a new section in the bylaw. I like Jan, uh, Jan and I liked what you were saying. I liked having a little bit of an intro that Pat suggested, mm -hmm. you know, a statement or two. So I don't think, I think if it's just part of the de uh, definition, I think people will miss it. I think, I don't know if they would yeah, understand. Yeah, people don't read those. Yeah. No, it, it needs to be another section. And it, it needs to have a strong beginning, but then it needs to go back to our definition and then to pull some things from the purpose. Mm -hmm. Ben, I can see you're about ready to go with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just curious what the Concord, Concord, Concord's um, intro statement was. Hold on, let me get it pulled up. I had it a second ago too. Let's see. I still am killing my laughing that Plimpton is exactly our old criteria. I don't know if we got them um, from, or they got them from us, but they just conquered. Uh, Where did it go now? Purpose. Oh, here we go. Uh, preferably pre preserved and historically significant building or structure, which is deemed um, better, would, which, which has determined by the historical society would be better preserved than demolished in accordance with the standards set forth in this section. Um, and that section just says, Uh, da, 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 da. that actually just goes to why they're doing a public hearing <laughs> yeah uh, I, don't, so I don't think there's anything there i'm looking at it too i think uh -huh. what we're do yeah. is go back to the title of our title of our bylaw and take that as our first sentence say that the historic commission in order to preserve historically significant buildings or something like that 
in the interest of the town um, and then somehow say for the reasons of you know economic value educational value environmental value or something like that um, pr would pr would prefer to rehabilitate or conserve historic buildings you know something like that without giving specific criteria, just saying why we want to do this, because we've already given the criteria about why they're significant. Now we're establishing why we want to keep them rather than knock them down. So we would be recommending yeah. that they be preserved. And so that that word can go in there, but then we can pull. Actually, Jan, I love when you put the, the, uh, an icon architectural icon. I, thought that was... I was saying buildings as historic landmarks. This was from some notes I'd made when I was thinking that we we're going to do right. a presentation to the landmarks, icons, whatever. But yeah, yeah and I... buildings as architectural icons and buildings as culturally significant. I mean, somehow there's so many values for the town. I mean, there is an economic value. People tend to think of money being put into these things as black holes, but in fact, they return value to the town. Um, and part of that is not just tourist, but it's also the environmental impact of reusing materials mm -hmm. um, and maintaining older, higher quality materials and that kind of thing. Um, well, it's the character too, maintaining the character through the historical representation of buildings. Right, and that has an economic value. It also has an educational value because sometimes so, experiential history is easier for people to get than reading history or being told history. Like going through Emily Dickinson house can be more educational than reading one of her poems for some people, right? So I don't know how to get that all. <laughs> So, okay, so I, what if we say the historical commission in order to preserve historically significant buildings will determine, will recommend that a, or will determine, will de designate a building as preferably preserved if it is, if it is determined, um, it determined to have, you know, educational, social, historical, well, but value. no longer determining, it's already been determined right. under significance. I think it would be something like, in order to provide the town with, you know, the historic landmarks, the architectural icons, the educational sites that enrich its blah, 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 something like that. It would need to include something like character or other, um, other characteristics that apply to sort of, you know, ordinary buildings. Mm -hmm. So that we, you know, we, we reach further than landmarks. Um, right. Well, if we go back to my economic, educational, environmental, um, emotional, <laughs> those were the four E's from Skelly. All right. That he gave us. Does he, does he mean sentimental or sort of associative? He meant emotional attachment was the kind of um, it, it concern for character that drives tourism. Yeah. Fosters community and pride, neighborhood yeah. pride. Which is, which is character, character of the community. Right. The idea of... Um, well, maybe the com that word community is probably important in here also. Mm -hmm. Not just town, yeah. but it's... It's also things. a kind of you know, collective memory um, mm -hmm. that 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 our built environment can hold that and uh, express that in way. You know, like Jan was saying about the Emily Dickinson House, as opposed to her poetry, that that it can stand in for um, our sense of having a past, having a you know a a sense of memory, really. Historic identity. Historic, yep, that would be also another phrase to use, I think. What if we would said you... something about wanting to wanting to contribute to the town's robust um, 
culture or robust history or whatever. The phrase you just used, Teddy, that I now have lost because I still have pregnancy brain. Collective, um, collective memory. Yes, I was going to say robust collective memory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I th then it kind of captures everything and I don't know. The problem with collective memory is that academically it's a very um, fraught term. Mm -hmm. um, oh sure it, it's been yeah it's been parsed a lot um cultural memory is um allows for it to change and adjust with each generation um collective memory now has kind of been seen as um something monolithic and unchanging um what about robust collect cultural identity because uh, i like that yeah yeah it was culture identity or or the character of the town. Well, well, well you, that's what that is, I think. You uh, could actually right. say identities. It doesn't have to be a monolithic thing. It can be, um, you know, plural, plural, a, a kind of pluralistic could scope. Say robust cultural historic, identities. Robust historic character and cultural identities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we are I mean, I'm getting I'm getting tired so I'm not I mean I I'm at the point where I need to kind of read this over and have something to react to you know like tomorrow yeah. and then I've got pregnancy brain I've got um you know COVID brain and mm -hmm. Zoom brain yeah. um so I, I just just I I just feel the need to say that because I, I I'm just getting to be not not very effective Eddie, I was feeling the same way just now. That, yeah, agreed. Uh, that we need to we need to kind of digest this this last. You know, yeah. the the English are known for their being for for them being uh, being repressed, but every now and again, you just doesn't work. <laughs> you got to see um, what's in your mind. I'm happy to play with this paragraph with some of the stuff I had come up with for the yeah. preservation okay, support and um, send it to Ben and and then yep. send it out as a as a idea to play with yeah that would be great yes that sounds amazing thank you jan that's that's wonderful mm -hmm. and and i can send it to you too jane then and we can maybe play with it the three of us and then get it back out and then and then is that then we go into the process right is that the next part and that you've already laid out we just need to put it in prose process sorry Oh no, not that process. Okay, this oh, one. Yeah. Well, there's a pretty straightforward process. I mean, if we don't already have it in this document, it the we know what it is. The model though. is the model is very straightforward. Yeah. Ben, you can fill that in because that's just town procedure at this point, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, sorry, I'm confused. What procedure we're talking about? I, I have the Zoom demolition. Brain. The part you have on the screen, demolition. Right here, demolition. Yeah, you just take yeah. out the section numbers and and say what we actually have. We have to decide about how many months delay at this point. But other than that, yeah. What well, well, I will say, this is the section um, that talks about like whether a property owner can come back and how the delay is lifted. So I think that is important discussion to have. Um, can you, can you, and that we, in the, sorry, in the definitions, we defined the length of the demolition. I think, so if we're, if we're considering, um, you know, Jan, thanks for working on the idea of preferably preserved. I think the next few sections of the bylaw, we could have, uh, you know, whether we, whether we, maybe we combine this with emergency demolition, but we, I think having the idea of an emergency demolition is important you know, and then define, then helping, I think the expiration um, and change of ownership are really important. And then enforcement and penalties are good. And as a part of the general bylaws, you know, I said that right now is part of the zoning bylaw. So there's actually an appeal process defined by zoning law in the state, but as a general bylaw, we could actually write in um, enforcements or remedies, you know, for instance, we could, the local historic district has that it can go to arbitration or mediation before court or, you know, a third party could help resolve the issue. So I don't have any answers, but, you know, we could have a few different, um, a few different provisions in here. 
But right now, the bylaw, for instance, doesn't clearly define when this expires. So, you know, someone may come before the commission, have a 12 month delay issued, and they never actually demolish the building. And then five years pass. Right. And then they apply to the town to take the building down. They said, Oh, I went before the commission five years ago. And I thought making... it did have a one year expiration. Yeah. It says right there. Right there. Well, no, that's yeah, part. it does. Does not commence within one year from expiration of the delay. Well, that's, that's, ad that's added. So that's that was new? that's not in the current bylaw. Oh, oh, so. we already did that. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if we're, if it's in there, I mean, it's just something to consider. Do we like that? You know, is there? Yeah, yeah. Well, can we meet again next week? I mean, and just get this thing out of the way before the holidays. Not me. I no. can't. I can't meet on Wednesday. I can maybe meet on a. A Monday, but I can't meet on a Wednesday or Tuesday. Jane Wald, you can't meet at all next week. I'm sorry, I can't. That's yeah. okay. You have a lot going on. Um, um, so could we maybe to maybe to get a little further ahead? Thank you very much, Jan, for working on preferably preserved. I wonder if maybe right up the rest of us. Maybe Ben, you could you could work on the draft the process and then maybe some of those other things Nate that that you've raised are the things that we need to spend our time on but I mm -hmm. but I think we you know maybe we could just look at your recommendation Ben about the process and then yeah and if Ben you could at the same time as you're doing that go through and just clean up all the old stuff that refers to yeah, the, format that would really yeah. help if we weren't looking at section numbers and that kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. Anything so for, that simplifies yeah. it would help. So my thought is this whole section demolition, I think should be deleted. And I think we should have a section for, you know, we could call it even like, um, you know, not, not necessarily, we could call it like demolition or um, what are the, after this, we just have emergency demolition. Yeah. And expiration and then enforcement penalties. Yeah, I mean, maybe we have something, you know, like the, um, I don't know, maybe we, we actually could define a section allowing demolition during delay or something like how to, you know, how to lift a delay. I don't know, come up with something that's actually clear because otherwise they can, if we allow the demolition, they can allow, they can proceed. If they wait the 12 months, they can proceed. So I don't really know why we have to define it unless they're trying to return during the delay period to have the commission reverse course. So well me, actually what this section should be called is something like subsequent process. You know, after the delay is yeah. right. Yeah. And that's really what yeah. it is, what we're trying to do. Yeah. And it could be as simple as like, you know, the historical commission may, you know, impose conditions on a demolition delay. Like such mm -hmm. as, you know, restoring the property, moving the property. Um, mm -hmm that will, that can enable the property to be demolished before the delay ends, you know, via a public meeting or something. Yeah, can we, can we just sort of wrap this up, bring yes. this button <laughs> on it and, um, and just do those, do those several things uh, with um, Jan working on finishing up the preferably preserved. And Ben, any time you can pull towards this, maybe you can just kind of work on it with some suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and then Ben working on the demolition process. And then we'll, we'll finish it we'll come, in January. And then we'll come back. That's yeah. great. Do we have a yeah. date for that meeting? No, not, not right now. Mm -hmm. um, so Nate, what do you, in terms of time, <laughs> Yeah, Let's go just go through the rest of the agenda and call for public comment if there is any. Seeing, I don't. No hands. Any hands? Um, then uh, any un unanticipated items? Hearing none, then let's um, <laughs> set the meeting date. Ben, can you send me a clean copy of what we did tonight so I can work with it? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. The meeting date 
um, I, I could meet between Christmas and New Year's or I could meet in January. Mm. That would be good. Like, is everybody around on the 28th or 29th? Yep. Um, I, I won't be. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, are you taking vacation? <laughs> I am much needed. Nate say you could. Nate's probably going to be gone too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm actually out, I think, the 28th and 29th as well. Of course you are. You guys actually take vacations. Mm -hmm. Well, how about right after the first, so that if we need a second kind of thing to finish up, we have time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're thinking the... Fifth or sixth? Pat, you said you can't meet on Wednesdays. Um, I can't, can't meet next Wednesday. I oh. can never meet on Tuesday. Okay. But I can't meet on next Wednesday. So the fourth or the sixth? Um, There's a possibility that we would be starting our drive back to Massachusetts on the sixth. Um, but not the fourth. Which, yeah, but not the fourth. Because I think we were planning to leave on maybe the fifth or sixth. So um, that's going to be an interesting trip. Right? <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm not going to be with you. <laughs> Maybe I'll write a book about it someday. <laughs> uh, does this is the six look good? Uh, I could meet on the fourth. We're the sixth. She okay. So, but I'm the other day, fourth is the sixth. The so fourth is a fourth. Monday, and the sixth is yeah. a Wednesday. Okay. Patty, are you still there? I am. I can meet on either day. Why don't we say the fourth? Okay, yep. sounds yeah. good. It's, is 6.30 all right? Yep. Okay. The days will be getting longer by then. Yeah. <laughs> well, That's the day I thought. <laughs> Jane, your day finally got shorter. It's turned dark during the meeting. I know. <laughs> I know. I finally. Say, it got very dark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But she's still outside without a, a coat, so. Yeah, I did. I did make my husband bring me a sweater though, because it's it, it's a little colder. <laughs> so okay. it's a motion to adjourn. Yes. All in favor. Aye. Bye, everybody. Aye. Take care. Bye. Yeah. Great. Wait. Did we Thanks. wait? Did we second it and roll call and all that stuff? I don't think, need to roll call for adjournment. I don't think you need to. Okay, do cool. That. I'm just gonna. We're just gonna call it adjourned. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. <laughs> Jane so, says she wants to go. We're out of here. <laughs> That's fine. Um, what, I just want wonderful to holidays to sure. everybody. Yeah. Yes. Happy enjoy. holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. We'll see you on the fourth. Watch mm -hmm. your sugar and Great alcohol. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Good vacations, bye. boys. Bye.